Welcome to CTSB TV. Today, um, my name is Mitchell Kruzna, and I'd like to welcome Lisa Zabian. Um, and um, we have uh, something a little different today. Um, we have a, a story of tragedy, um, recovery, and hope. And um, uh, welcome, Lisa. Um, um, <clears throat> tell us a little bit about yourself and your family. Um, my name is obviously Lisa Zabian, and um, we live in Lee, Mass. Uh, my husband is a, owns a store in town, and I have four daughters. Um, I didn't grow up here. I grew up in New Jersey, but I moved up here about uh, 23 years ago and met my husband, Ali, and we got married, and I decided to stay. We decided both to stay in this area. Can you tell us um, what what happened uh, about a year ago? Um, it was uh, August seventh on that right. day. Yeah, um, my second oldest daughter, Callie. Um, she was nineteen at the time. She was leaving work um, from Great Barrington um, about nine o'clock at night, and she hit um, a guardrail. The road was wet. And she hydroplaned and hit a guardrail. She um, called my husband and he told her, just call 911, I'm on my way. So he, you know, jumped out of bed and, and headed to Great Barrington. Uh, during that time, um, a wonderful gentleman pulled over with his wife uh, to just help her kind of navigate traffic by her because um, she was in the right lane taking up, you know, there was no uh, shoulder to pull off on. So she was kind of right there in the right lane. It, it is a two way highway at that mm -hmm. point. So he pulled over and pulled out a big flashlight and was helping her direct cars around her car. And uh, everyone was just slowing down and, and nicely going around and everything was fine. And they were just standing there chatting about you know he's asking her questions about college and all of that and then a car um was coming straight at them and it wasn't slowing down and i don't know if he yelled run or she yelled run but the car's not stop you know the car is coming straight at us so they ran into the middle of the road and the car that was coming at them last minute swerved um, and hit Callie, um, which um, she was thrown in the air and landed on her head and slid pretty far into the woods. The gentleman that was with her, um, it took him about 10 to 15 minutes to find her. Mm -hmm. And the boy that hit her did not even realize that he had hit a person. He was under the influence of, of, of? Um, what I'm familiar, I mean, what I've been told that he had been smoking pot with his friend and was under the influence um, mm -hmm. while he was driving. Did he stop or, or pull over or would he just keep going? Um, I, I believe he pulled over. I think he thought he hit a deer maybe. Um, and then I don't know who ran up to his car. I, it was, it's a little foggy from there. I don't know the mm -hmm. entire story, but um, he was actually shocked like that he hit a person. He had, he had no idea. Um, now, um, so how did you receive um, the call? Um, Ollie called me. Um, it took him about 15 minutes to get there. And then Ollie called me and he was so shaken up. And he just kept saying, I think she got hit, Lisa. I think she got hit. I'm following the ambulance. Mm -hmm. So um, I hung up with him. And of course, I, I knew it was bad. I just did. I could tell by his voice. And I just started screaming and crying. And uh, my daughter, my uh, one of my younger daughters was here. And um, 
we called my my youngest daughter and the three of us ran to my neighbor's house and um they drove us to the hospital now <clears throat> was that fairview or was it where BMC. BMC. We went, okay. yeah we went to bmc um wow this is difficult um so um what what happened uh so they did they move her right away to a, to like Bay State or was she there for? So we we um we got to the hospital and um she was in critical condition. I don't think they thought she was going to make it, mm -hmm. and they brought us Ollie and I in to kind of kiss her and you know before they brought her they brought her into surgery. So um, they did a four hour brain surgery on the left side of her brain and I mean on the right side I'm sorry and then they came back out and said that the bleeding had started on the left side also so they had to re remove that side of the skull also and did another four hours of brain surgery so it was eight hours uh, total at BMC for the surgery um, they finished um, earlier the next morning and um, the doctor brought us in and he said listen there's a lot of damage here he goes i have no idea what we're looking at you know we'll be lucky if she knows her name mm -hmm. so um i mean it was very difficult news and um i don't know for some reason i just was like no that's not going to be the case she's she's alive and if she's alive there's hope and um, we have God and we have prayer and that is something that is much more powerful than anything mm -hmm. and I just I just felt as long as she's alive we we can do this she's gonna be okay we're gonna we're gonna get her through this so um, when at what point like like for yourself and and for your husband, what 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 did you call upon for strength and for um, your core, you know, your family, your faith, you know, um, and then um, friends and people started praying for you right. and Kelly. Yeah. So, you know, when we were waiting for her while she was having the surgery, um, Ali just sat very still with his hands over his face in prayer. And I just needed to pace. I just needed to walk and pray and walk and pray. And, mm -hmm. you know, it was funny at the time I was kept thinking, I can't console him and he cannot console me right now. And it was like, there was a little bit of fear like how, how do you do this like how does a couple get through when they're both in so much pain and you can't comfort each other at that moment and you know friends started to come and show up and and then this kind of amazing thing happened where we both were were calling upon our faith calling upon god because at that point you have in your own human capability, you cannot, you can't get through it. You just can't. It, the pain is so deep that you have no choice but to, you know, cry out to God and say, okay, God, I surrender completely to you because within my own strength, I, I, I cannot do this. Mm -hmm. And I think that it just bonded Ollie and I at that time where we both knew that we had God to console us that we didn't need to consult each other at that very moment, that we were both hanging on to God. And that was a bond that brought us very, very tight together. Um, and she was transferred the next day to Bay State. And the people just, you know, the prayers and the people just started coming together. And we started a prayer circle every night at nine o'clock and, and it had started previously with my youth group and the church and it was something we did and every night at nine o'clock 
whoever was in that waiting room, whether it was for Callie or if it was for someone else, um, we came together um, as a group and held hands and we prayed. Um, sometimes people didn't speak English, they spoke a different language and they prayed in Spanish and we all just held hands and we all prayed for each other's loved ones. Um, and it was, it was actually a, a, an amazing thing. It was so healing. And I think um, for everyone that was involved, it just, it gave everyone strength. You know, mm -hmm. it wasn't just us, but it, it gave everyone strength. Mm -hmm. And that went on for a very, uh, I mean, that still goes on. We still pray every night at nine o'clock. We come together as a family, but mm -hmm. that um, being in the, her being in the ICU and, and we didn't know if she was, going to pull through but those people just kept coming and coming and the prayers you know through facebook and through messages and everyone just being together at that time was so powerful mm -hmm. pretty incredible you know it's uh that support is very important and the prayers um are are uh, the power of prayer is it's amazing um yeah. so um Kelly was transferred transferred to Bay State. Um was the progress slow or was was there any sign of of uh like like the prayers were starting to be answered and um well she was she was in a coma and they actually kept her in a coma. Um mm -hmm. I think it's about a, a few days or so, but then there was, you know, like she moved her finger. And, um, you know, I have videos of the first time she kind of, you know, reached out and, and grabbed Ollie's hand. Um, you know, she opened her eyes. Um, so it was extremely slow, but every, it, it didn't matter what she did, you know, moving a finger was like, it was so amazing that we were every tiny little step of progress felt like a miracle. And, and I do believe that it was a miracle, mm. um, every step of the way. Um, it was very slow. Um, they were trying to stabilize her, you know, they were trying to keep her alive. Um, mm. it, it was pretty intense and, um, we were just together. Um, as a family and just by her bedside and we allowed people to come and, and be a part of it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's why I started posting so early on because, mm -hmm. you know, during a tragedy like this, and I, and I've written about this, it, it, it does have a ripple effect. It affects your community. It affects, it affects everyone. It affects your family, your community, your town, people outside of our town and this, I mean, it, it really spread. Mm. And I felt that it was so important to keep people abreast of what was happening mm. um, from my mouth, not from, mm. you know, people talking or, or trying to guess what was happening, but to keep them aware of what was happening because they, they love us and they care. And I know when, you know, tragedies have happened in our town, it's like, well, what's happening? You, you want to know, you don't want to bother anybody, but you, you know, mm -hmm. you care, you want to pray, you want to know what's mm -hmm. happening with that person. Mm -hmm. So um, I made that choice very early on to keep people, you know, aware of where she was and what was happening. Yeah. Um, I saw, um, you know, signs and things up in Lee and uh, Kelly Strong. Um, was that started around that time? The, uh, the um it was started pretty early it's kind of a lot of it's a blur to me um mm -hmm. but uh, a local woman vicky sorrentino um mm -hmm. really um was so influential as far as starting all of that and and mm -hmm. you know doing bracelets and and mm -hmm. really just it was pretty incredible and and we had never met and we still have never met because then the virus came and you know we still haven't been yeah. able to meet each other but I mean, that was, that was pretty, pretty incredible. And then people just were just amazing. I, I can't even tell you the amount of love that our family felt from our town and just all, like all over the world, because, um, you know, an organization I worked for faith to faith ministries, um, they're connected all over the world. And those emails just went out to everyone. 
Wow. So the prayer just spread and, and it was worldwide and it was definitely felt and it was definitely very healing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very powerful. Um, yeah. Um, so, <clears throat> so you got, you have the prayer support and um, the community started um, supporting. Um, and um, so um, did you, was most of this time at Bay State or was Kelly moved to a different hospital at some so, point? Yeah, so I, um, I don't have the exact date, but it was around in September. Mm-hmm. We got her into Spalding um, Rehabilitation Center in Boston. Mm-hmm. So um, we moved her there and we were just blessed to be able to get in there because Mm -hmm. um, they don't normally take um, a patient that that's, that that is, you know, so severe. And um, so we moved there and um, a a friend of someone we knew in town um, lent us their apartment. And then we got lucky enough to get into the Ronald McDonald house, which was right next door to Mm -hmm. the hospital. So we were able to have a, a, a beautiful place to live and, you know, took us two minutes to walk over to Cali. Mm-hmm. And um, I could see her bedroom window from my bedroom window. Oh. So it was nice in the morning. If I saw her light go on, I knew she was up and I could, you know, get over there. So that was an amazing thing to have that. They're, they're an incredible organization. Mm-hmm. And I, I never really realized it before because I never needed it, but um, it was such a game changer for us to be able to live so close by. And uh, so at this point, was Cali um, becoming more um, aware and um, starting to uh, um, move, or, move around a little bit? And she could, she could move her right arm and her right leg. Um, She couldn't move her, her left arm was severely broken. She broke her collarbone. Mm -hmm. Um, She fractured her um, pelvis and and her lower back. There was a, um, not the back itself, but there was, Mm -hmm. you know, a part that was fractured. So Mm -hmm. she was, you know, she had a lot of, a lot of injuries, Mm -hmm. Um, but she started to move her right arm and her, her right leg a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, she was becoming more aware a little by little she couldn't speak um but she would you know grab our hand or um it was a very slow a very slow process you know she Mm. couldn't sit herself up in a chair she would fall over um it, it was it was very slow so <clears throat> were they able to repair a lot of the the broken bones and, and the damage? Um, so um, everything repaired itself. The arm, um, they actually tried to repair the arm at Bay State. Um, they brought her into surgery, but she couldn't handle the anesthesia. Mm. So her arm, um, they just let it heal. It was broken in, into three pieces mm. and it kind of fused itself back together. Mm-hmm. but she's doing pretty well with it. Um, good, good. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's, it's healed crooked and she probably won't be able to lift her arm up, you know, over her head, but she can move it. So that's, that's great. Good. Um, does, does Callie have any memories or anything of during that time? Um, um she doesn't remember, um, she doesn't remember being at Spalding at all. And mm. we were there um, till January. Wow. She has no memory of that. She doesn't remember. Um, she doesn't really remember much of her life uh, at all. She has bits and pieces um, that come back to her, you know, people now, you know, that she's a year, almost a year now, she kind of remembers little bits and pieces, um, nothing of college, um, 
you know, maybe a dozen things that she, she kind of remembers. Mm -hmm. Um, so she did, she lost her almost her two, she lost her total memory of everything. Um, so she, she has to relearn everything she's ever known. She has to, she has to relearn. Okay. Um, I've, I've been following the Facebook pages and mm -hmm. um, seeing her pro progress since almost the beginning. And um, it seems um, when, when you're going through it, you're never going to get through what you do. You keep seeing this, the improvements because yeah. you're, you're with her every day. You don't see the, the strides and I can right. see them. It's amazing. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, She's doing amazing. Yeah, and I think because um, you know her her boyfriend Michael is here, mm -hmm. all my daughters are here, and mm -hmm. you know my husband, and she is surrounded by people, twenty four seven. Mm -hmm. She's never alone, and she we do therapy with her all day long, yeah. and she just has a ton of support and a ton of love, and um, she has the, the strongest faith I've ever seen. Mm. She really has amazing faith in God. Mm -hmm. And very early on, we had talked in the hospital and she didn't even know her name really. I mean, she didn't know much of anything. And we were having a conversation about God. And she said to me, mom, God was with me on the side of that road. And I was like, what? <laughs> um, God saved me. God, God saved me. So, and I got like chills and I was like, are you sure? Like, I'm like, did she really just say that? But she did. And she knows that God was with her. She knows that God saved her. And her faith is, is very, very strong. And even though she doesn't understand everything about it, it's there for her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it, actually, she's been an inspiration for my faith because sometimes we complicate everything, and it's like what she says is so pure and and strong in her. And right. what she says, it's like, you know, you know, there's there's, you know, there's some yeah. there's someone that's um, in charge and helping us and listening to us, you know. Right. Um, right. So. Well, I mean, it's incredible for someone to have faith and then it is so pure because she doesn't remember anything of the world. So there's nothing of the world in her. So she's very literal and she's very, she's just, her heart is so pure, you know, mm -hmm. and that in itself is a, a pretty incredible thing. And she really is just full of joy. She's happy, you know, most of the time unless she's a little tired, but she doesn't really, she doesn't get sad or depressed. Mm -hmm. Sometimes she gets a little angry, if you know, like someone's like teasing her a little too much, but mm -hmm. she is really just full of joy. And that's an incredible thing. I mean, that's what we all strive for, isn't it? To have joy mm -hmm. and not get beaten down by the world. And she, she really has that. It's, and I'm, I feel so blessed for her that she doesn't have to feel sad or feel depressed because she doesn't, she doesn't know that all of that stuff, you know, mm -hmm. she really is an inspiration. Um, that purity is what we strive for. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, not to deal with all the outside things and to keep focus on, on God. And, you know, I see, uh, I see her um, on, on a, uh, like a, a a bicycle um a seat a seated bicycle that's amazing and she's going all over the place and she's talking and you just got back from a vacation and how did that how did everything go with that and it, it was good every time we go away um that's the one place the jersey shore because i've taken her there every year since she was born mm -hmm. and that seemed to be the one place that she could actually picture in her head and describe mm -hmm you know, what it looked like there. So I think it was very healing for her to be there, mm -hmm. to be at a place that was really felt familiar to her for mm -hmm. real, you know, not because someone told her about it. And it, it was good. I mean, it was hard to navigate. You don't realize how difficult the world is when you're in a wheelchair, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, to get around, but she did it and we did it. And, and it was, it was great. It was really healing for her.
you know, I see her um, walking. Um, I saw like uh, her progress even walking um, with help, with a lot of help in the beginning. And now she's like. So she can walk with a, a full brace on. Um, without the brace, she can't stand on her leg. Um, so she still has paralysis in her ankle, oh. in her foot, and in her, um, so a lot of her legs. So she, if she stands up on her own, she'll just collapse. Um, she okay. can't, has no strength yet there. Okay. Um, but we're definitely, I mean, at first she couldn't move her leg at all. So right. now she's being, she's starting to be able to move her leg. Um, mm -hmm. It is getting stronger. So uh, that's the one thing I, I do believe that eventually um, that will come back for her because it's not injured. It's, it's because of her brain injury that she can't walk. So I think as she continues to progress, I think we're going to see more and more, you know, strength and movement in that leg. From what I've seen, like, like I mentioned that she's come a long way with that. And, right. and, and she was like having a hard time walking and without having somebody to help her and, mm -hmm. and to see her walking you know what on her own with the brace and and uh it's so encouraging and uh she has such a go for it attitude she's like i don't know where she gets her energy you know i'd like to have some of that energy yeah. you know um i think i think you uh god use you in an amazing way giving you the strength to endure and to help her um so you know i i, I keep you all my prayers and and to give you strength and, and to endure um the trials um but uh you're a great example too of of uh what it's all about in our faith you know this is this is what we're supposed to do you know be selfless and give ourselves completely for someone else. Um, so um, keep praying for you and uh, yeah. for Callie. Um, I know, I know it's it's gonna, but she'll she'll uh, she's gonna come a long way still. And uh, absolutely. Is there anything you'd like to say um, to the to um, the viewers? Uh, any any like. Uh, like uh, to a summary of all that's experience, I guess, to, to, uh, to uh, people who think that life is overwhelming and, yeah. and there's nothing out there that, you know, is worth anything or, or people are overwhelmed about the coronavirus and, and all that's happening and the riots and um, right. With your with your experience last year, um, is there anything you could like uh, tell us about hope or faith? Sure. Um, I think that you know I and I say this over and over again that the world is a crazy place and we are all going to struggle in it. Um, you know, some worse than others, but tragedies happen. And, you know, some people are like, well, God must be really testing you. And that's not it. God is not testing us. We have free will and bad things are going to happen. That's the reality of this world. When you have a relationship with God, you do not have to walk through the trials of this life by yourself. And to have, to not be alone and to be able to rely on such an amazing God who sacrificed his own son for us, which is the ultimate sacrifice, to have that God by your side, holding your hand, walking you through step by step how to get through this life is the most amazing thing in the whole world. I always say like, I feel like I found the cure to cancer and nobody wants it. It's like, I found the cure to being in pain in this life. And that is walking with God. And I wish that I could help more people come to, you know, come to see that, that it doesn't have to be this difficult. It is going to be hard and there's going to be sorrow and there is going to be pain, 
but there can be joy amongst that pain when you have that relationship with God. And without it, I know how I was without that relationship with God. I was so lost. Mm. I never felt joy. I never felt happy. I was depressed. I was sad. And I am so grateful for that relationship. I know that I, there was no way that I could ever get through this tragedy with my child if I didn't have God in my heart and in my life and my husband also. Mm. You know, our marriage, our family, all of it is, is held together by our faith. Mm. Um, and I wish I could just, I wish I could instill that in, and give that gift to every single person because this world is, is really crazy right now. But when you trust that God is in control, you can let go of the fear and you can just let God be in control. The story, your story and Callie's recovery, uh, I, th I think are amazing examples and witnesses of, of uh, miracles and God's grace and, and love in our lives. And um, he can take, you know, something awful and make it something really beautiful. Yeah. Um, you know. And I think that when you just stop for a moment, you can see the blessings within your trial. And, and if you just focus on all the blessings that come with your pain, mm -hmm. it, it's, it just changes everything. Mm -hmm. It sure does, you know. Yeah. Um, so, um, well, Lisa, um, thank you for, for sharing with us today. And... Um, um, Mitch Kruzna from CTSB TV. Um, have a good day. Thank you so much. Yeah. Or a sad day. Yes. It's a happy day. Why? And I made it past the whole year. Mm -hmm. And like, I went through all my surgeries and everything. No, the only thing left for me after I did it, it's been a year, just for like me to like completely heal, which will get be faster and faster. I believe so also. Yeah, especially for my brain. That's why I'm like real excited for it.